Itzchak Perlman, Daniel Barenboim, Jacqueline Dupre, Zubin Mehta, and Pinchas Zuckerman. Five individualists with a single aim. And that group of people rolled through international music for the next well, 30 years, 40 years, whatever it was, which gave him his, as it were, passport to anything he wanted to make. He made, what, 80-odd films? It's a lot of films. <laughs> that was awful. Yes, it was not finished. It must be a little more spread. Right. Precise. Right. No, spread. Spread is not precise. <laughs> They've all come to London for a very unusual concert which in its way will make musical history. But in spite of the fun, it's a very serious occasion. Their first rehearsal together. He was able, through his knowledge and his passion for the subject matter, to win the trust and ultimately lifelong friendship with many of these giants of the music, music industry. And you see that in all his films. He must have just the right instrument. And so he's come to borrow one through Charles Beer, successor to a famous family firm that's been specializing in stringed instruments here in the middle of Soho since 1892. Uh, morning, Monday morning, it's always difficult to do. Isn't it? I don't like the sound of this one. I love this one. And, of course, they turned it on. I mean, um, they knew how, how to actually convey the fact that they were kindred spirits. They knew how to make it plain that they were fond of one another. Uh, they knew how there was a rapport between them which you wouldn't get between people, who, even, even great musicians who hadn't met before. So it was, it, it was a, a joy, and, and, and that was there within the films. You could see them. <laughs> the adrenaline just took over. Let's make our Mendelssohn. Oh, God. And Christopher was able to sort of get the atmosphere going. And then, then you look at it and you say, oh, my God, we were really having a great time. You know, it was really fantastic. We were very, very innocent, all of us, all five of us. And we were very close friends. Yes, so it was a very, was a very happy occasion. Do you know that there's a serious public waiting outside? <laughs> Come on, let's start. But what they loved above all was his ability to capture their spirit, their performance, their enjoyment, their passion uh, on film so successfully uh, and unobtrusively. When Christopher Newcomb started making films, it was at the fag end of the age of deference. And um, if you didn't live through that period, you can't know how deferential this country was. And in music, that was very much the way that relationships existed between musicians and media. Musicians were held apart by themselves, by their agents, by, by the music business, and the media was expected to doff its cap. And uh, a different kind of musician started coming onto the scene who clearly owed nothing to the atmosphere of deference. They weren't, they were mates, they were out on the town, they were enjoying what was the beginning of Swinging London. And something flips and the world of music is never going to be the same again because this is not only a filmmaker who wants to make films about his friends, this is a group of musicians who are prepared to be quite natural on film as they were making their impact on the music scene and changing it. Please, all from. Up you go. 